Hello and welcome to another Enix tutorial. Today I want to simulate a press fit type of connection. Basically, we are pushing this shaft inside the hub, and because of the uh, dimension differences, the diameter of differences between the shaft and hub, we're going to generate some pressure inside the hub, which generates friction on the shaft and makes it able to transfer torque. Now I did some calculations to size the shaft properly. Here I want to transfer 50 newton meters of torque. Uh, both hub and shaft are made of steel and I'm using safety factor of 2 and assuming the friction of coefficient of 0 0.15 between steel parts. So first I apply safety factor and increase the uh, torque and based on this formula uh, which uh, is actually uh, calculating the friction force around the shaft I can find the minimum pressure needed on the shaft to transfer this amount of torque. Now here since the materials are the same I can use this formula to calculate the diametral difference, the minimum diametral difference that I need to generate this amount of uh, pressure. And at the end, by having the pressure and uh, friction coefficient and size of the shaft, I can find the axial force that is needed uh, for this press fit. Now there are also online tools that you can use like this one that makes the calculation a lot easier. Here you just fill out this form. You need the torque to be transferred. I applied the safety factor. Coefficient of friction is room temperature. The engagement length is 20. Here uh, the inside of the hub is 20 millimeters. And uh, I do have the dimensions of the hub, the outer dimension, inner dimension. Also, you can uh, have a range of the uh, dimensions that you can achieve based on machining abilities. You probably have some tolerances. So this is upper and lower limits of what you can actually do with machining. Uh, there, my range is around zero because I want to compare it to the calculation. But of course, you should consider higher and lower deviations from your dimensions. And then I'm using a steel and uh, same for the shaft. I'm using 30 here. My upper deviation is 8 thousandths of a millimeter, as I also calculated here doesn't accept the same numbers so I had to input a lower deviation as well it is using it for safety so it knows if you have lower deviation some of the parts are going to be loose for example then it can also calculate uh, stress concentration factor and uh, calculate safety factors based on that and also it has this optional shrink fit design. So instead of press fitting your parts, you can actually cool them down or heat them up to achieve uh, the desired fit. And then you press on calculate and you get the results here. So the minimum required interference pressure is 23.6 as we also calculated here. And it also calculates it for lower and upper limits of your deviation. And here you can see it is also giving us the temperature we need to do the fit without press fitting. So if I cool down the shaft to minus 17 degrees Celsius, I can easily slide the shaft into the hub or I just need to heat up the hub for this amount. Now, this is very important. So if you have applications that the temperature may rise to this number, for example, around 60 degrees Celsius, you may lose 
uh, the contact between shaft and hub. So you need to be careful about this. We are assuming that everything is happening in room temperature, but if your part is going to work, for example, inside an engine, then this temperature uh, is not good for uh, your application. Now, uh, we also see the assembly force or axial force needed is also very similar to what we calculated here. And also it gives us this uh, nice distribution of a stress along the hub and shaft. Now let's move to NX to see um, what is the simulation result. Now here I have the part in modeling app I already made. So I move to the pre-post. Then I basically make a new film and simulation. Notes that here we have contact and large displacement. So uh, I'm going to use a uh, nonlinear multi-step 401 and create a solution. Now in uh, bulk data, I want to have larger strain, but I assume that deflection is not that big and the materials are not going to be plastic, so I don't need material nonlinearity. Also, there are other things here to change which uh, on the case control, I need to request the contact output. Here it is, yes. Here I enable contact to see contact result. I'm gonna come back here and change uh, some other stuff. But for now, it's okay. I create a step and uh, one second, I want to have one increment. So the shaft goes 20 millimeters in one increment or in one second it's like hammering the shaft in and click ok now i can start meshing i use 3d tetrahedral select all the parts and use around half of what is recommended the uh, mesh looks good and then i apply the material I'm going to use the same material that I have in the calculations it is still 1005 and okay then I can move to the simulation and uh, first I want to fix the hub so I use a fix constraint on this uh, ring and then I want to enforce displacement on the shaft. I'm gonna hammer this end. So I use that end and I want to move it for 20 millimeters. Next, I need to define contact between the shaft and hub. Here on geometry, we actually don't have contact. So I can't use the automatic pairing. So I will use a manual region. The first region is around the shaft and also this head of the shaft is going to be in contact with the hub. The target region is inside of the hub. I click OK. I also have 0.15 as the coefficient of friction and click OK. Now we have constraints and contacts set and ready. But before moving to uh, the simulation, uh, I need to uh, explain something here. In a lot of simulations like this, that you have contact, but uh, you don't have contact at the beginning of the simulation, or it takes time until parts are in contact. So you have a loose part or under constraint part here, for example, the shaft is under constraint or it's free to move before it comes in contact to the hub. So at the start of the simulation, 
the shaft is free to move and last run will stop and give you an error that the shaft is under constraint. In that case, uh, we can force uh, stabilization in the uh, simulation by going to nonlinear contact parameters. Here under stiffness control, you can turn on this MSTAP uh, card or uh, stiffness matrix stabilization. So I'm going to enable that. And this will stabilize uh, the matrix even if uh, parts are free to move. And then when they come in contact, uh, they, it starts to work properly. Now I can save here and solve the problem. The simulation is now finished and I can take a look at the result. Here we have one increment. If we take a look at displacement, you can see that the shaft is being pushed inside the hump. And uh, what I'm interested in here is the contact pressure. So if I here in the calculation, you can see that I have almost uh, 24 megapascal of uh, contact pressure. So here you can see that I have a lot of contact pressure at the beginning of the hub where the uh, shaft is touching the hub. Well, almost no pressure at the end. So let me average uh, this part and see what is the average. So you can see I have around 33 megapascal, which is somehow close to this 23 but not close enough, so let me explain what is the problem in these kind of simulations uh, which you have nonlinear contact. Here I'm moving 20 millimeters for uh, in around one second. Here we have it in the top. And that's pretty fast. And uh, so you can see that the uh, the stresses are increasing really fast and uh, some uh, elements or stresses on elements are not actually converging to the real values. We can also see that in the uh, reaction force, which actually shows the axial force needed to do the press fit. And if I add all of the reaction forces, It's around 50,000 Newton, which is a lot more than the 6,000 Newton. So we can uh, get a more smooth uh, result if we increase the increment. So let me go back and increase the increments and uh, then see what is the effect. Here in the sub case, I can edit the sub case. And I increase the time, like in five seconds. And I want to do around 10 increments. And remember now this is going to take a lot more time to simulate than only one increment. So I click OK and solve the problem again. Now the second simulation is done with more increments. Let's now take a look at the result. Here you see that now I have 10 increments up to 5 seconds and if I play on the displacement you can see I have a more smooth action of moving this is an only uh, and this is only for the first increment now let's see the final increment uh, and take a look on contact pressure. You can see now we have the whole movement. And if I average here on the shaft, see now we have 29.4.
which you can compare it to, it was, I think, 32 something. It's so still different than the number we got here, but that's mainly because of the mesh, which is not very fine, and all those imperfections that generates these hot spot on the uh, contact point between the shaft and hop. And also, the increment again, uh, you can increase the increments to have a more smooth uh, press fit and see more realistic uh, pressure contact. Let's also take a look at the reaction forces. And you can also see here that the reaction force has also dropped a little bit, but it still we have a huge reaction force. And again, this is because of this fast movement of the shaft, which is not actually happening in theory.